Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Warped, a completely unnecessary Star Trek podcast where we do unasked for audio commentary of Star Trek episodes. Here are your hosts, Sean. Get me to my regular doctor. They're familiar with my weird, you know, things. Matt. It's completely bonkers, and, and yeah. I didn't understand what was happening <laughs> yeah. like 80% of the time, but I loved it. Jake. His abs unfurled. <laughs> Philippe. I don't have honor. <laughs> What's the point? I want to live and sing and dance. Erin. Uh oh, this show is so good. We're just like watching it. Min Win. Would you fuck, marry, or kill me? <laughs> all of oh, that. Do all, <laughs> the three. all three in that all order. On May. Dear Diary, I kissed an android today and he told me he felt nothing. Make it so. On this week's Keeping Up with the Cardassians. Guinan makes a new friend. I'm Aaron. I'm Sean. I'm Matt. I'm Jake. Lee. And I'm Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Here Guinan we go. Does, Guinan does make a new friend this week. That's that is true. correct. Yeah, whether Very she nice. Or not. Nice opening. Yeah. We know Aaron did her homework, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She has some passing familiarity with the episode. Passing no, no that, there was, she, uh, she yeah. knew about the Cardassians. I could tell she was paying attention. It reminded me when, it's like. Very important stuff. When when it was a big episode. and It reminded me when Bart gets, like, an extra point on his test in, and passes history because uh, he, <laughs> he demonstrates, like, knowledge, applied knowledge or something. Uh-huh. And, and Mrs. Kerbapel gives him a passing grade. So I, 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 that's what I thought, about, which is a positive. Well, Bart's one of the most likable characters, so. Yeah, I would say. I'll go with that. Yeah. In all of fiction, really. I mean, <laughs> Aaron is one of the most likable characters in fiction, too. <laughs> Were Cardassians Cardassian invented for this episode? No, we've seen Cardassians before on the show. The Bajorans, the Bajorans are, new. are new in this okay. episode. This is the first time we ever meet the B- a Bajoran. So this is obviously a huge episode in the sort of overarching mythos of Star Trek yeah. uh, for everything that everything that comes a lot afterwards. It all kind of starts here. Um, I guess we should say what we're doing, right, Sean? Right? Yeah. Watch- Aaron, what are we watching? We're watching... Ensign Row. Ensign Row. Season five, episode three. And we're I want recording... to ask, did you all watch the episode? Did everyone watch the episode? Yeah. Yep. All right. What do, you, what do you think of Ensign Row? She's a badass bitch. Yeah. That's that's the Bajoran women, man. Yeah. They're, they're bad. They're badass. She looks good in a uniform. Yeah. You know what they say, once you go Bajoran, you ain't going to be snoring <laughs> like Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> hey, you, went, you, went, wow. you went one too many, bro. You were okay. I feel like, I feel like, like you, you I feel like you could workshop that into a yeah. pretty good joke, but it's not <laughs> yeah. there. It's yeah. not. Well, that's what this is, I guess. That's what we're doing one here. big fucking workshop. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it is. You know, we must that's established canon that that's what Philippe does on this show. He works uh-huh. out, this is where he, he works, works out, out to school five yeah. on the I, show. Then he goes to the chuckle yeah. hut. Then he goes down to the chuckle yeah. hut. Yeah. And, chuckle. Uh, I, I really let them have it with my polished set. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, what? what? I feel like you that gotta, joke made me develop that ridge that Ensign Rowe has, that she looks right. like she's like permanently like furrowing her brow. Speaking of ridges, the first guy looks like a, uh, you know, a, oh, the kid, barber. a kid looks like a oh, globe yes. <laughs> That's Mr. Mott. Project with the equator. He's like, ah, make his head like the earth. <laughs> <laughs> we're recording this remotely. Yeah, we're Help back people, on Skype. So well, this... if it's a little weird, that's why. Yeah. 
uh, had to do it. Just try to get the episodes back on the air, guys. I'm having, I'm having really like hard. lockdown sweats. Like yeah, I'm right. having like flashbacks. I'm sitting here and I'm like reminded of the dark times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well. Well, we're gonna plow through. Uh, does everyone have it up? Yeah. yeah. I got 45 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Okay. Well, can you tell us when you have 45 minutes exactly? Because <laughs> we don't have those extra 30 seconds. You can't go back. No, it, our starts. Our starts. Zeros for us. 45:01 is where it starts, oh, and it's mine like says, it's, mine says 45. Oh 30. no, we have power, Paramount Plus, and you have it through. Well, I'm on Paramount Plus. Plus. We're all on Paramount Plus. I'm on Plus. Paramount Plus. That's the only place to watch it, is on Paramount I know, Plus. Oh, but why is it different? No. <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't answer that. I mean, yeah. Are you three. sure you're on the right episode? Yeah, 4503 is where it starts. We pretty quickly hit the limits of my technical knowledge. I cannot <laughs> answer your question about why. Maybe somehow when it's through Amazon, it's a little different than when it's through direct well, like, I think we're going to have to I'm we're using the, to I'm using the Paramount we're, Plus. We're on the frame where I can see the Ridge guy, the, the globe head. Is the, like, first thing oh. you see, the first thing you see in this episode is Jean-Luc. Yeah. So if you're seeing the blue guy, you're, you're, you're too far ahead. in. You, no, can, it's you should be able to back up. The blue guy and we'll hit play. Yeah. Because <laughs> they've trimmed it. This they've is... trimmed it. Oh, interesting. All right, Sean, uh, count us right. down. In three, two, one, punch. All right. There's Sean Luke. Now we see the blue guy. And he's right. getting his haircut. Yeah. By the way, this is the best barber in Starfleet. That's right. Yep. Riker tells him, Riker calls him the, he doesn't seem like a very good barber. He keeps no, he pushing doesn't. Sean <laughs> Luke's head around. Like, yeah. He seems kind of un. It seems like it would be an uncomfortable experience. <laughs> a Jean Luc has no hair to cut for one thing. Yeah, this has got to be the easiest job he has to do. Yeah, but I don't like the way Mott like manhandles Jean Luc. No, no. 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 Right, not, like, later good, on, Riker's <laughs> like he's no. the best there is. He's the best. I feel in like the, the barber business. is like much more in tune with their client. <laughs> I like right. the I like the sideburn trimmer, which I yeah. feel like. If you had it on the wrong setting, would completely go through your skull. <laughs> right. It's like a laser. I just feel like that's all that guy does is use that thing. Like I feel like John Luke could do that himself. He just in the replicator. Yeah. Can oh, he... I need to. I need to turn the subtitles on on mine. Okay, there we go. So that's Mr. Mott. We'll see him again. We've seen Bolian barbers before, but we've never seen Mr. Mott before. But we'll see him again. <laughs> it's like a little Star Trek knowledge. Yeah, they're, they're, all, they're all barbers. I like when they bring back those kinds of characters, though, because it gives a sort of feeling of, like, verisimilitude, yeah. right? right. Like, that you, yeah. like Somebody's you paying attention. Right. It's the same people all over and over again. It also kind of leads, goes back to the old Star Trek of every planet, they do one thing. And this planet, mm-hmm. they're all barbers. They're all barbers. <laughs> all Bolians are barbers. And they yeah. don't have hair, though. <laughs> this is funny. We don't have hair, but... I think we've made that joke <laughs> on the show before. Yeah, and none of them have hair, right? So that's right, why they... Right. They're so obsessed with it when they saw well, the races. When you can't do, you teach. They were <laughs> they were curing all sorts of diseases before and just were obsessed with like making intergalactic peace. But once they saw the luscious locks on some humans, they were like, no, this is what we're. This is where we are. Destroy, burn all books. That's one first contact mission where Picard would have been the wrong person to send. <laughs> No. Uh, give us, give us the stats, Sean. I don't have them because I'm watching it on my phone and I can't look up IMDb. <laughs> oh, what? What is this going is a, on? This is all. You guys want me to Google shit? Fiasco. I'll should just, I, I'll, should I go online and try to find it? Uh, I'll I, it. I'm you sitting in front of my can computer. Do it. I got the IMDb. Aaron's doing right, it. Do it, do it, Aaron. All right, search IMDb. <laughs> she had it up. He's going. What's this called? Star Trek. 
Just, All right, you're watching we're really testing your knowledge here. <laughs> Next generation. There you go. That's what it's called. Ensign Hell. Uh huh. <laughs> so far, so good. So far, you are correct. Uh, is it there? Right there. Oh, right there. Right there. There you go. Hell yeah. You have to run. You have to make everybody guess what the IMDb rating is. Where do I well, see you that? Well, you gotta tell us what the uh, season the, episode the, and air date. What, the air date. Uh, it was aired on October fifth, nineteen ninety one. Nineteen ninety one. Me and Philippe were fresh juniors in high school. Mm-hmm. Delicious and fresh and supple. Yeah. Well, I think you're Spun our skin. The bromance was really starting to, to coalesce at that point. It was budding, a budding bromance. Mm-hmm. So, okay, I have the I have the rating up. Uh, who wants to take a crack at it? May? I'll say seven. All right. How about Jake? Um, I'll say 8.1. Okay. Matt? Uh, I think this is a really good episode. So I am going to say 8.2. Sean? I think I remember what it is, so I'm not going to guess. All right. Unless you want me to guess. I can see it. I can see it. So I can. Is it so seven, eight? it would have been perfect. I would have been absolutely right. What's that, Sean? Go ahead. What is it? Uh, it's a seven point eight. So May uh, wins by Price is Right rules. You guys <laughs> inflated it a little. I tell you, them Star Trek nerds—they hate strong women. Mm. They got. That's pretty high for. I don't know. I feel like all, all these things are pretty harshly judged. But this episode's good. I'm not even sure it's Star Trek nerds. I don't think Star Trek nerds spend a lot of time on IMDb.com. I think, think so. this is just some sort of like, I don't even know what Russian. It's those, it's those filthy casuals. It says it has 2.9 thousand ratings. Yeah. Is that what that means? So 3,000, almost 3,000 ratings. People rated it. Mm hmm. It's so now we're getting the backstory on the Bajorans, right? Oh, yeah. The boss man's here with his deep yeah. V cut. What about, as, what do you guys as, think about those? As usual, all upper brass on Star Trek are either incompetent or evil. Yeah. yeah. What do this you think guy? about the glittery, like... Like, his Las Vegas style yeah, piping. The, the piping, those glittery piping on his... I think we're already meant to kind of, like... He nah. seems like a showman. Yeah. Like he's supposed to, he just got off like the Star Trek, you like know, he's sales <laughs> Vegas. Or something. Yeah, exactly. For you. <laughs> that's how they know. That's how you know it's the future. Everything's sparkly. We've been over this. Well, they had, they had just opened the, they probably had just opened the Las Vegas Hilton Star Trek experience, and maybe they were trying out new waiter. <laughs> Oh, it looks it sure. looks like he it looks like he just strangled Space Liberace backstage. And it looks changed. like a, he looks like the he's the Mater D on Ten Forward. No oh, loud. Anyway, he's a dick. <laughs> he is a dick. Is he either funny. needs to go full sparkle or just sober cost like leader costume. It's it's the in between that's bothering us. The transport the transporter guy is wearing an old school uniform with the zipper down the front. You don't see those too much off in season five anymore. Mm. He's got one of the old season one outfits. Damn. Zipper down the front? How far does it go? You know, the like the original season one where the seam was down the front. Oh my god. He's you'll see it when they mind. when they cut back to the transporter room, you'll see it. They just dug that out of the old wardrobe. They yeah. thought they'd all been burned, but <laughs> Well, they always they make the extras and you know, people in the background wear them. They're not custom making outfits yeah, they just, every episode. They have every have them on hand. Crewman. I like to think that they all need help. Getting their zippers done in the back, like when in old movies where uh, the guy's putting on her evening dress. And mm-hmm. He's like, get my back. Uh-huh. Because, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, they're they're pretty be hard to get. You need assistance for those rear entry yeah. uniforms. Oh, you're right. 
I don't know. I think that they have some sort of like space like zipper, right? They, they like self seals or something behind once they put it on. Oh, man's thinking about in Star Trek world and you're thinking about when they're dressing up to play dress ups, right? I was thinking in the regular I was thinking in the regular <laughs> world and the Star Trek world. No, like, I'm the, probably the costume designer. The costume people probably have to zip them into those things in real yeah. world. In real world, right? There she is. Yep, yeah. so great. I th- something in the IMDb trivia said that the uh, you know, they, he makes her take the the earring off. Yeah, he says that it's not Starfleet, but yet Worf is allowed to wear a sash all the time. Yeah. Well, Deanna doesn't wear a uniform at all. <laughs> yeah. I think they're sticking it to her because she's new. It's, yeah. It's because he doesn't, and they he don't doesn't like, her. like her. He doesn't yeah. like he's her. He's got a bad rep. She has yeah. a bad yeah. rep. Yeah. And he's, he's like, I'm going to be I'm going to be a total hard ass on her. Right? Yeah. Do so they act, do they explain why she's got a bad rep? A little bit. They talk about their thing. Right? There was some she was Galon two guys. Haven't you heard about what happened that went down at Galon two? <laughs> yeah, she, a lot of people died under her command. Okay, but we don't know much more than that. It, it gets talked about in the episode. She explains it later on. Okay, I think I something she talks about. I, guy, right? Did I you did nap take during this? Siesta. Yeah, <laughs> I, I slept okay. through it as well. I missed some parts too. But I didn't know if I missed it or okay. Anyways. So let's let's let's, let's just do a quick yeah a quick summary of what's going on. The Bajorans are this race of people who have been. Uh, displaced from their planet by the Cardassians, and they're sort of scattered all over the galaxy. And she's a Bajoran, and she's in Starfleet, but she's, like, got a real, like, bug up her ass about the whole, like, being a displaced, you know, a member of a displaced people. And she went, she was... A bunch of people died on a mission that she was running, and... She went to prison, but they got they bust her. They the admiral who was in that earlier scene, Vegas admiral, got her out of prison and has assigned her to the Enterprise against Jean Luc's and and Riker's uh, better instincts because the the mission that they're going on is to try and find this Bajoran uh, who they think has been doing terrorist attacks against the Cardassians, and she knows him. So they've brought her on the ship because she knows Orta, the guy right? that they're going Orta, to meet. yes. Yeah, she knows Bajoran culture. She stuff. knows Bajoran and and the Bajor- where and she's like been brought in as an expert. And Data's saying we should go talk to blah blah blah, the guy who's our usual like Bajoran contact. And Rose about to tell them he's powerless. Like he's just a puppet that we, that gets set up to like make you guys feel better. The real guy you need to talk to is this other guy. And I'll take you and I'll take you to him. See, she's like rolling her eyes at Troy telling him they're all like, Oh, he's very reasonable. We'll have a productive conversation with him, which is very Star Trek, the next generation, right? Like, right. Let's find a diplomat that we can sit down and have a conversation with. And Mm -hmm. she's like, you guys are a bunch of dummies. That's not going to work. He has no power at all. I'll take you to the real guy that you really need to talk to. So that's the setup of what's going on in this. Scene. And she's rubbing them all the wrong way because she's like, she has no interest in playing along with their Starfleet nonsense, right? Yeah. She's like, you don't get it. So the Bajoran makeup, the Bajoran makeup gets toned down, I think. After yeah. This episode, because that like, top part of the ridge like that goes away and it just becomes the little nose thing she got a little lot of botox up in there so is this like a israeli palestinian yeah yeah sort of yeah yeah that's what it's based on Um, and it obviously becomes the sort of main the main overarching storyline of Deep Space Nine, which is all about the Bajorans and the Cardassians. Yeah. So this is introducing this. 
So don't worry, Aaron. You're going to see a lot of Bajorans and Cardassians in the coming years. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> this guy. This is the scriptwriter's going, let's get this jacket off of her. Show off those yeah. knots. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I feel like so, she really commits to this role, though. I. She's good. She's really good. She's, she's great. Her. Michelle Forbes, she's great in this. She was great on Battlestar Galactica as the Admiral Kane or whatever her name was. Uh, she was on a season of True Blood back in the day. She played a oh, fairy. Cool. She's a good actress. Oh, yeah, I, I watched kinda, True Blood. I kind of want to say that she was, that like Kira was supposed to be this character originally, but then she wasn't available. So they had to invent a new care, a new version of her, mm -hmm. which is why Kira and Ro are basically the exact same person. Right, right, right. Oh, I thought this was the person that was on. No, it's not. But I think it was supposed to be, and then they couldn't get her. She always wears. Reason. She wears a shirt like that all the time too. They show off her her arms mm -hmm. on D Space Nine constantly. Her arm games. Yeah, this is the her same. This is the same Upper foothills. Games. These are the same foothills of Los Angeles that are used for every outdoor scene. It's the exact same place where the last step where Darmok was filmed. It's where they <laughs> did the Gorn. It's where they always go. It's the same, yeah. exact same. It's good. Those, those hills are, you know, the hills of Star Trek, basically. Yeah. <laughs> we got to go, guys. I also feel yeah. like it's where MASH was filmed. It is. Like, I think the, well, I don't know. The, I mean, that same, just like, the opening Squids with the helicopter. Yeah. The rest of the show is just done on a set. I don't know. They did a lot of outdoor stuff on Mash, though. But I think it was all in on the on the lot. Oh, maybe. But the the opening sequence with the helicopter. Should we do Mash? Should we do Mash cast? There you go. <laughs> mash up. Mash cast. Mash potatoes. You had to re right. If you had to recast Mash, uh huh. Days. TV stars. Where do you go? Today's TV stars? Or you know, I guess you could go for the stars of any bitty. I don't know. Who's who's, who's the our modern day? who's our who's our modern day Alan Alda? Right, like, I don't exactly, know. yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, because he has to be like warm. Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch does not convey yeah. warmth no. at all. You British, you're not warm. His whole thing is like, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Britain. <laughs> sorry, he, entire country. He could be, like, he, he be one of the, the, the more uptight doctor. <laughs> yeah, he'd make a good, like, Charles Emerson Winchester the yeah. third. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, when he gets a few more okay, years. Okay, so there you go. Um, I'm going to keep thinking about this. Yeah, this is this one has got my mind going. Like my mind what, is, is my mind is racing. And we're recasting the like TV a, show. You need right? like a Ryan Gosling or somebody like that to play Hawkeye. Like somebody <laughs> who's like, because he has to be like, he has to be like successful with the ladies, right? Because Hawkeye yeah. was always right. hitting on the hitting on the nurses. So he has to be hot, but like sensitive in the Alan Alda seventies. Yeah, feminist kind of way. Like, there was still an intellectualism there. That's the part that I found. Like, there's not as much of that. There's not as much of the bookish. I mean, Ella. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you have to believe him as a he. Uh, you also have to believe that he's a brilliant surgeon, right? There's yeah. like a lot of things that there's a lot of boxes you have to check off. Yeah, for, exactly. Right, right, right. I, this is my favorite part. Yeah. They're like, can I join you? She's like, do you no. mind if I join you? And she's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, okay. What is happening on your screen right now? Because I'm watching Picard and Ro talk to each other. Uh oh, we're not lined up. Oh my yeah, god. We're, we're in Gynanville. Are you not? Oh in no, I haven't got. They no, they just went to commercial uh, on my screen. Uh, commercial. Yeah. Oh, now it's back to no. Okay, so now Wait, it's on Luke's commercials. Screen. No, they they just went to black, and now. Oh, okay. Back. Sorry, I was having peacock PTSD. No, no, no. 
Oh, okay. Sorry. So here's Deanna and Beverly come in. And yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Let's be friends. And she's, we like, and she's like, fuck nope. you two. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I hate both of you. <laughs> Tell me when you guys see Guinan, because I'm going to hit play on our end. I kind of love, oh, I she's love that she completely right. blows Beverly and Deanna off. Like, that's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, there's Guinan. Like, talking, to, to talking, to, talking to Jordy. Yeah. yeah, I like how Jordy is like. I don't. I think she's terrible. I don't even think she should be in this uniform. <laughs> I'm like, Jordy, you shouldn't. Be Nobody. They all that. think that. Guinan's the only oh. one who do, who it's gives like, her. I a chance. Show you. Yeah, it's like the only non-square. Well, she's sort of the only. You know, Starfleet. It's she's kind of a Barkley, right? She doesn't yeah. fit in in the the like hyper competent right, right, right. everyone's everyone's pleasant and nice world yeah. of the enterprise right yeah. barkley's different in a different way but it's another situation of she doesn't really fit in with them because she's got all this anger and she's got a huge chip on her shoulder and she's not interested in like She's not there to make friends, you know, <laughs> like right. like every reality show contestant ever always says. I'm not here to make friends. friends. Mm -hmm. She's just happy to not be in jail. Like, that's what she tells him when she first gets there is like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be here e either, but I'd rather be here than in prison. Correct. Yeah. And Whoopi's going to be like, I'm all I'm all ears. So tell me the story. And uh and it's they're just like, you don't want to be alone because you would just be in your apartment. If, right. Or if you room. really didn't want to talk yeah. to anybody, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be hanging out in a ball. Sitting in the middle of the <laughs> 10 forward. Yeah. Right. You, want, you want attention. I love a project. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> right. Stop. They both, Get they're, they're kind of perfect for each other. Like. Whoopi, Whoopi loves to give advice and Rose like there for it. <laughs> She's yeah. also just intrigued by just complex people. She She's likes she likes by. weirdos and outsiders, right? Yeah. Because like, again, everyone on the Enterprise is so boring most of the yeah, time. Yeah, she's like, right? I'm 500 years old. I've seen it all. <laughs> See what this is about. Give me the drama. Is this where yeah. she tells him? Is this when she tells her that like Jean Luc saved my life and he's like, No, no. Okay. That's it's in this the, episode, though. Yes, right? yeah. it's in the next conversation. Oh, okay. Whoopi's great. And now as we usual. see the yeah. the uh, the um the plot. The plot. <laughs> the plot thickens. I like the baby monitor. Because it turns out she's on a special mission from Admiral Vegas, right? Right. Admiral Vegas. <laughs> That's a good name for him. I'm just gonna call him that from now on because I didn't. I love that when game. I love the coat with the shirt on Picard. Oh, it's oh I I'm, I haven't seen it yet, but I, it's uh, coming up. Yeah, yeah, the thing, the Darmok outfit. Yeah, yeah. look at that. That suede, that suede and velvet jacket. That's yep. a, that's his best look, I think. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a little this Han second, Solo this going is on. Second, this yeah. is the second week in a row he's worn it because yep, he yep. wears it in Darmok too. He's like, he's like telling them, like, yeah, put me in that. Yeah. It's got to be the most comfortable thing he's worn. Yeah. Not yeah, it's not all. It's not all binding like all it's, their other uniforms. It's not all up on his. <laughs> it's on not a hundred percent polyester. Yeah, it's not. It's not a unitard. So. It's got some. It's got some breathing room in it, like. Yeah, we should all try to wear unitards one time for plus the he podcast. Looks, plus, he just looks great in it. Yeah, it's his it's his sexiest look. It's hard to pull. It's off. even sexier than the short shorts from short short when he went to Risa. Oh my god! Maybe you can get the short shorts with this jacket and see. see what it does. <laughs> Do a little mix and match. Yeah, a little mix and match. A little on my on my Jean Luc doll. Yeah, yeah. I, I him, still love to. I do want that. him to do a fashion show. I wish they had put out a Jean Luc doll with all of his different outfits. Like, <laughs> yeah. Here's his here's his deep V and his short shorts from when he went to Risa. It wouldn't be a doll; it would be an action figure. Oh, <laughs> well, not not in this house. <laughs> I was I was thinking about it, and maybe not so much now as a few years ago, but a, I think a good Alan Alda part 
would be Owen Wilson. Interesting. Yeah. Because it's kind of like, but, yeah. But he doesn't like... have the, the, the intelligence. Luke Wilson. Uh, Owen Wilson's not like real quippy. He's not quippy. Like quick. But... But How I think about the, I think the, we think about it not being a dude? Does that help uh, at all? Hey, open it up, baby. Yeah, that'd be totally fine. Yeah. Or diverse. I didn't cast. watch enough Nash to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just <laughs> let's just cast Meryl Streep and be done with it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> in all parts. In all parts. Yeah. <laughs> I would. I would. I would pay real money to see. Meryl Streep do a one woman show <laughs> where she played all the characters in MASH. Yeah. A la Patrick Stewart's one man idea. Christmas Carol. I, I do think that's the best idea. But what do you think about Martin Downey Jr.? Martin Who Downey is Jr.? Martin Downey Jr.? Martin, <laughs> Martin Downey Jr. Whatever his name is. Martin Downey Jr. Robert. from the from the Robert Downey Jr. Sorry, talk Robert show. Downey. <laughs> <laughs> I always say Martin Downey. I guess the talk show host though. Yeah. There's a there's a reference that no one under there's a reference that no one under forty will understand. <laughs> Morton Daddy Junior. Yeah, got hit, he got was hit our in the face, got hit Daddy in the face with a with a oh no that was Geraldo got hit in the face with a chair right that one time yeah yeah it broke his nose. Morton Daddy Junior. The logo was a giant set of teeth and a mouth. Yeah, he had gigantic <laughs> teeth. He did. He had big old chompers. That guy's got a real melty face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and he talks weird because he's got a like thing on his neck that like he's got like a he's got like a. Oh, axe. this is. I thought you were talking about Morton Downey Jr. Yeah, I, was like, I, was, I, was I was actually watching. Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, 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 you're right. He does kind of have a, a sleepy face. Big teeth, melty face. Big teeth, melty face. Trait like a tracheotomy with the. I got distracted by watching Star Trek. <laughs> uh, that's that's forgivable. You should never make that mistake. I know better now. As usual, Worf's being a real stick in the mud about this whole situation. Worf's a rules fault guy, you know. He's like, I don't approve of all of this, like people breaking the rules and not doing what they're supposed to. Okay, I do Mr. not. I do not trust them. You know, that's Worf's mm-hmm. whole vibe. Maybe Bradley Cooper. He's kind of smarmy and quippy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not bad. Especially after his turn as Rocket. Yeah. The raccoon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're all standing now. We're all doing stupid standing (laughs) things. All right, so now who's your clinger? Um, you're saying I can't have Meryl Streep, right? <laughs> no. Meryl Streep, we've already established that's the best one. That's so too now easy. Just, we just have to go to our B. What's our B choice for these things? What What is the R? Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. yeah. As Corporal, no, as uh, Colonel Potter. She'd be a great Colonel Potter. Talking about her wife, Mildred, back in Iowa yeah. or wherever she's from. Riding horses. She'd be a great Colonel Potter. So why is Ro upset? Because they didn't listen to her. She's trying to give them advice, right? And they're not listening to her. Because well, the just... terrorist the terrorist guy is saying we didn't do it, right? He's, he's claiming that they didn't, that the Bajorans are not responsible for these attacks. Right. <laughs> And so they're trying, but Worf doesn't believe them. So they're trying to figure out what's really going on. This episode's a kind of a mystery, I guess. Like, yeah. But she like left the ship before she was supposed to. Yeah. Oh, now right. She's in she, trouble. Like, right, 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 right. She got in trouble because she beamed but down. She was told she was to go to. because the admiral told her to go. And, and right. Guidance just about to explain to to convince her that the best idea right now is to tell Jean Luc everything. Yeah, blue him in. He'll be the the best person to have on your yeah. side. She's like, look, you don't know him, but I do, and he'll listen to you if you go to him and be honest with him. Because she's like, he saved my life a long time ago, and yeah. Do they ever go into detail on that, or they they it's always we're gonna movie. we're gonna see it. 
It, we oh. get to watch it happen. Oh, that's right. When? At the end of this season. Yeah. Mm. We're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch the, actually the beginning of the next season. We're gonna right. watch a two parter where we see Guinan and Jean Luc meet for the first time. Ooh. From her perspective, anyway, not from his. It's a time travel-y, timey-wimey thing. Yeah. Meanwhile, Guinan's like, I broke the rules and I brought her up here because she's got something to say to you. And uh, Guinan always just does whatever she wants anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she overrides everything. <laughs> we all know who's really in charge. I mean, Guinan could basically run the ship if she had any interest in doing it, right? Right. She's a better shot than Worf. We already learned that. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's 400 years old at least and has a lot of wisdom. Oh, there's a fish in the tank. I can yes. see it moving yeah, around back there. Yeah, definitely saw it. Mm. Yep. So she's going to explain to him now what the real what the real story is. She's going to become Aaron a semi she never makes it into the main credits but she becomes a semi-regular character on the show cool. there's a, a great episode where that's about her and jordy together uh, she has a lot she has a lot of really good episodes there's a great episode fair. where there's a re- great episode where she and and Guinan uh get turned into children oh and, and yeah picard too picard too yeah. and they have and they're Guinan has to teach her how to play because she grew up in like a war zone and has never like played before. That's a good episode. Mm. It's a good show. Yeah. You know what? You know what? I think this Star Trek The Next Generation might be a good show. It's a good show. Go out on a limb and say, this is a pretty good one. Yeah. And what's really remarkable is that I think for 1991, it was really doing different stuff than anything else yeah was doing at that time this is another great like um sort of it's it was the federation were the bad guys all along right because what she's telling him is we're the ones who have been doing the, the the bad things it wasn't the bajorans but it also wasn't the cardassians it was the federate it was starfleet right Trying to get the Federation on. Uh, trying the to, war. like, stir up a war, right? Oh. Classic evil in- admiral. Classic false flag attack. On... Admiral Vegas is up to yeah. no good. He was, He seemed, <laughs> you know, uncharacteristically, like, severe and like this is what you're doing i mean i guess all the admirals and the they're, all, they're all like that yeah. yeah it is it is built into the fabric of star trek that anyone higher than the rank captain. of starship captain is evil or corrupt or, or, or incompetent, incompetent or some combination of, of the, the three. three yeah Up to and including the president of the Federation sometimes. Yeah. Uh-huh. So now we're getting Rose like tragic backstory. That she was like a child in the camps and that's why she's got all this like trauma. What else, is Michelle, what else is Michelle Forbes famous for, Sean? I don't I know. I, I don't have IMDb up. Look her up. Oh crap! I got the IMDb. What do you have, Aaron? Hang on. <laughs> she's uh, hold up. She's got to print it out. Yeah. Uh, Her name is Michelle Forbes. Forbes. Forbes, like the magazine. There's a lot of television. Yeah. She is. She's been on like every television show, but always California with a K. That's that David Duchovny Brad Pitt movie. Yeah, I think she plays uh, David Duchovny's girlfriend. Oh uh, yeah, because they kind of start with the movies, wife. don't they? Yeah, she plays like she becomes obsessed with Brad Pitt. She's Prison in Break. Mockingjay. She's in Hunger Games. Oh yeah, she is. Is she playing Hunger Games? She's in. It's funny because I've just Lieutenant been rewatching Jackson. all of those. She's in. She doesn't show up until the last two. Mockingjay. Yeah. 
she's she's one of the soldiers part of the gets war into, like war stuff in the last two movies she's on a tv show called big sky and new yeah. amsterdam isn't that like a like a hospital a show drama. she's on Grey's anatomy show. that's what i th- i recognize so she's still working in new amsterdam that's recent yeah hmm. Grey's anatomy she's... from 2019 Berlin a lot of Station, stuff. which was a three-year TV series. Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus video Ooh, game. She's a VA. Nice. So, yeah, lots of TV and, and movies. Chicago. I really like her. I, she's got I'm a always... professional face, so she's in all the, like, you can be a lawyer, you can be a doctor, you can be right, a... Right, right, yeah. She looks distinguished. She can really put on a stern face, too. Yeah, even without the fake ridges in her. Right. <laughs> yeah, True Blood. She was on In Treatment. Wasn't that HBO or something? Anyway, the list goes on and on. Boston yeah. Legal. Prison Break. She She's said Battlestar people... Galactica. Yeah, she was great on Battlestar Galactica. She's one of those people that whenever she pops up in something, you're like, oh, I like her. You know, she's always, it's always yeah. nice to she see her. featured a lot in day two of 24, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m., 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. <laughs> Remember 24? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was, yeah. that was, must have been the second season if it was day mm-hmm. two. Yeah, day two. But yeah, a lot of work. So they've I'm set up. They're a, setting a, up the. They're setting up the admiral, right? Because they've. They're. They're like bluffing, basically now. So she was on Guiding Light. That's her first credits. <laughs> Is that one of the ones you watched? Did you watch? Oh Guiding yeah, Light? I watched all. I watched all the CBS soaps. So yeah. Yeah. So what? What's their plan? Matt, what's their plan to to capture the to trick the captain or the they, admiral? They've told the admiral that the they've been ordered to like bring the 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 like the guy that they think the Bajoran leader. They're trying. They're they've been ordered to like bring him in, but it's like a trap. I can't really remember honestly because I watched this last night kind of late and i didn't fall asleep i watched the whole thing but i was a little drunk and a little high at the time (laughs) so (laughs) so i don't remember all of the particulars i think you have to recreate (laughs) that state and then you'll bring back the memories the basic joke you decided when you were from your notebook what's your joke that you decided you know what what i'm talking about matt no Oh, you had a funny joke that you came up with that you still don't understand it, but you wrote it down when you were. Oh well, that's ninety percent of my notes. Is everything <laughs> that I write down. You read it I... again the other day. I forgot it though. It's funny. I write things down Trust all the me, time. It's funny. I I wrote uh, the, first... the other last night. I wrote down that uh, my drag name would be Patty O Space Eater. <laughs> o Space Eater. <laughs> Uh, First name Patty, last name O Furniture, or something like that. Like yeah, Patty O Furniture. Very nice. Oh. These are the things I write down when I'm high and watching Star Trek. Like <laughs> that's great. What else did I write down? Um, I wrote down that it would be funny if there was a group of uh, like three superheroes, and one of them was named Thunderbolt, and one of them was named Lightning, and one of them was named Very Very Frightening. <laughs> <laughs> And like so, like Thunderbolt would be like Sonic, like thunderclap powers. Lightning would be lightning powers, and very very frightening would just be like a horrible monster, big scary like, monster. Oh. <laughs> Thunderbolt, lightning, and very very frightening. Wrote that down. Yay! Do you have any corrections, down. corners? Uh, I wrote down. Here's a fun little game we can play. Rank the villains: Borg, Klingon, Cardassian, Romulan. The big four, right? In all of Star Trek, arguably, the the four biggest adversaries of Star Trek, the Borg, the Klingons, the Cardassians, and the Romulans, rank them from most to least uh, intimidating, I guess, or or like who's the who's the biggest of the big bads? I mean, the Borg. I think the Borg. 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 
And then the Romulans, I think. Yeah. I think the, the the Klingons used to be, but then they, you know, they softened and. The thing is that the Klingons become, you know, a, allies. A, an ally, but I mean, sure. the Klingons are the coolest of them. I, I think I think the thing is like an an insidious threat, but as that you a, don't as see a coming, villain. it's always more dangerous feeling, and that's why the Romulans are. Yeah, my only problem with that is that I think they never really take much advantage of the Romulans. Like, yeah, I just feel like I'm kind of like used to them. I'm not worried about them. I they don't as, do as, as much with the Romulans as you would hope that they would do. As a Deep Space Nine fan, I really think the Cardassians are, are above the Romulans. Yeah. I think the correct order is the order I said them in. I think it's Borg, Klingon, Cardassian, Romulan. Mm. I think those are the bad those are the baddies in order. I like the name Klingon really a lot. I just think that's such a good yeah. enemy name. Klingon. It's also, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. It's also hilarious to think that the Cardassian, that they invented the Cardassians, you know, in 1990 or whatever. And long before the Kardashians, anybody knew right, who the Kardashians right. were. Mm hmm. But now if you say Cardassian to somebody, they assume you're just saying Kardashian. All right. So who has you know? a bigger ass? <laughs> Gold Ducat or <laughs> Chloe? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the classic the Kardashian, names, the Kardashian or... outfits don't really show off the ass very well. No, they don't. The, the Kardashians are an improvement. They've made improvements since then. It's all about accentuating. I mean, the that's villain. really the greatest villains are the Kardashians. And really, the real villains on this show are the Starfleet admirals, because John Luke is now John Luke's now calling out the admiral and telling him, "We figured out what you were up to, and I'm not going to do it." And the admiral's, mm, okay. <laughs> oh, you caught my like warmongering. Busted. That's but... why we made sure the ship was empty. <laughs> Right, they that it was a it was all a decoy or a bluff, yeah. Um, what else did I write down? Oh, Sean was talking the other day about um the we were talking about great infomercials, and Sean was talking about the one where you make a boat. The guy makes a boat uh -huh. out of the like the the like rubber cementy stuff that he invented. Right. That stuff yeah. is called flex paste. Yes, I looked it up. It's from the makers of Flex Tape and Flex Seal. There's a whole line of Flex products. That guy must be so rich. There's, it's a guy who invented all that stuff. And Good for him. Mm -hmm. His a, mansion's he's, all made out of that shit, though. Yeah. <laughs> so it's I mean, sort they, of they're, it's, water. They all live in – it's a family business, and they're all in Florida, so I'm guessing they're probably all horrible, like, asshole Republicans. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm, mm, but there's no leaks in that house. No, no the house does not leak. No. So now he's telling him, ha ha, we tricked you. There was nobody on the ship. Um, mm, 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 hey, Philippe. Yes. What is the greatest video game ever made? Wow, that's a that's a really a really hard question. I mean, it's like I can think about like what's the most historically significant one, or which one do I like the best? But I don't know how. Um, what, however you want to, however you want to define it. You broke Philippe, Matt. Matt, <laughs> way to go. Anybody can answer. I just picked Philippe and you, and, you, and you too, Jake, because you're. I would I would say to me like I would make an argument for Doom as being uh -huh. the most. In, yeah. I mean, it, it consumed my life. It, it changed the way games were played. Uh, it it beacon you know it heralded a new age of connected gaming and first person shooters and. And it was like a cultural like yeah. phenomenon too. Like, there's what an episode there's an episode of ER where they're all obsessed with playing Doom. It's like, very 
isn't the rock in the movie version? I think he might be. <laughs> I think so. I mean, yeah. It was much later, but yeah, it was... Uh, right. No, the movie came yeah. out long after the game. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's... Yeah, so I mean, it's... It spawned, like, every game, I think that, you know, technologically-wise, it's like, everything kind of came from the way Doom did something, you know? Networking, like, all the things that they they created, like, they're kind of like how Star Wars created like special effects and movies and how you did sure. it differently. Doom kind of did that, I think. And when did the first one come out? Um, uh, ninety three to ninety early nineties. Ninety three is when it came out. I oh, man, I'm gonna get it wrong and somebody's gonna get mad at me. Basically, but. you're talking about the game that uh, flunked uh, Philippe out of college. Yeah, <laughs> Got it. one of them. <laughs> there was a couple. It was the one? That, it was, what was this one? Was it uh, Warcraft or Warcraft Two? Warcraft Two. Yeah. I also this is I'm changing the subject for a second because Star Trek's about to wrap up. But I really like Jean Luc and Ensign Rose like relationship. Yeah, yeah. like Me too. it's I I they sort of I arrive like they sort of arrive at a place of. Yeah, we're very different people, but maybe we can figure out a way to work together. Yeah, and, and uh, if it's important to you to wear the earrings because it's a part of your culture, then wear them at work. Like right. maybe it's not the rule isn't so important. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. look at that set. Look, look at, at your sash there, Worf. I mean, we let Deanna wear yeah you know, whatever the fuck she wants. So yeah. why not? She comes right out. Of, she comes right out of hot yoga into the. That is for city. one. That is one hundred percent the mash compound. I'm sorry, but that is the mash compound. Nice. Well, Redress there's a part earlier like in the show where she tells him how to say her name because he says her. I don't know. It's Last like the, name. Yeah. In the, yeah. So right. they go. They go. Yeah. They're like. They're like uh, Asian language Japanese, names. Yeah. Last name. Or it's like first. learning to say that and do it right, you know, matters. And yeah, what and she he says, made a point of that, and then he did it right with uh, Orta, and it was significant in their first interaction. So that's right, because that he, cool. he had learned something from Ro. Well, she also know. made the point that most Bajorans just deal with; they just do what they people. Do. They're just used to dumb humans and getting it wrong. She, so right. they just go by that way, but she refuses to. Right. And later when we when we meet Major Kira, because Kira sounds like a first name. For all, it took me a long time to figure out that Kira was not her first name. Well, yeah, they her call her name. Major Kira and you think, well, oh, here her first name is Kira. But it's not because that's not how Bajorans do it. Anyway, the oh. episode ended. That's a very yeah. good episode of Star Trek, I think. Yes. Yeah. It introduces so many things in, you know, Ensign Row and the Bajorans really and the, very the occupation episode. and yeah. so much, so much going on. Does anybody else want to take a stab at a uh, best video game ever before Street we Street Fighter 2. <laughs> yeah. That's a huge one. That's a huge one. Huge. I would say the game that kind of built off of everything that Doom brought before it and then really changed the way immersive storytelling happened in games would be Half-Life. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I mean, all those games are based off Doom, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. My answer is Myst. Because nice. I think that Myst appealed to people in a, who would never play who would never want to play Doom or, you know, Mist like Mist somehow brought in like a completely different audience to games mm -hmm. because there were no games like Mist before, mm -hmm. and as and and I just for me personally, I was like I would never I've never played Doom in my life, right. but I played the shit out of Mist because it was so like. It was so like evocative and like mysterious and the sound and the visuals of it all were like completely unlike any other like video game. So yeah. 
That's it was huge. Answer. It was huge. It was it brought in the era of like the CD ROM games, so you could have like full motion 3D graphics and you know, even though they were because they were little film snippets or essentially, but it was a pretty big deal. I feel like it was a game that you got included if you like bought like a computer or something for a long time. Like Yeah. It was uh-huh. it any, anything that came with the CD ROM at that time came with Mist. Yeah. It was like a gateway game, like a gateway drug to, to gaming for people. Like, cause I feel like it was one of those games that people who never play video games were intrigued by. You know what I mean? Like, non gamers played Mist, like, were interested in Mist. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. But no, no, I of. think you're, I mean, it was, it was huge. It was like, it was everywhere. Yeah, like it was hard to like not run into, like there were books like at a time when there weren't books yeah. about video games. There were like <laughs> books on how to beat Mist and like what it all meant and the story. People were writing books about the, what the story was because there was only like sort of hints in the game. There were like novels, <laughs> like there were there was like a there was a whole Mist like industry that yeah. spun off of that game. Are they making any? Does that still exist? No, I mean, it kind of ran its course, but... Yeah. They made a bunch of... Se- they made several sequels that were all varying levels of kind of the same idea, uh, some of which are really good. And then they kind of, like, went away, and I, I remember looking it up a couple of years ago, and they were, like... they 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 still have, like, an active website, and they were, like, we're working on something new, but that was, like... That was like pre-pandemic. That was like three or four years ago. And I don't know that they've ever put out anything in, since the last time I thought to look at. So is that is that a game you've played through in its entirety, Matt? Missed? Yeah. Oh, I played all of them. I played Riven and I don't even remember what the rest of them are called. But uh, yes, I played. All, I was into that shit. I loved it. I just loved I just loved the vibe of it. It felt like being on the holodeck, you know, it had this kind of immersive feel to it that was different from other games. Uh, I think what ended up killing Mist overall is just that a lot of imitators started coming to market that weren't as good. And like we're trying to capitalize on that, you know. Yeah. We're gonna make, and and they were really shallow and not nearly as good, and so all of a sudden there were just dozens and dozens of games that were sort of like Mist. Um, yeah, and also I like puzzles, so that's you know I like a I like a good puzzle, and that's yeah. like, Mist is kind of the ultimate puzzle game. Remember, there's another one that came out maybe a little bit after that one called Seventh Guest. Yep, Seventh Guest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that was I think there was another good. one called The Eleventh Hour. That was yeah. like the sequel. That was like a sequel. Yeah. That guess was good. That had a lot of good puzzles in it. But it wasn't it didn't have as much of a story. You kind of just went around and followed the puzzles. There's there's a series out now that it's it's for mobile. It's like to play on your phone, but it's called The Room. Have you got have you have you guys ever played these games? Yeah. I there's have, like I have, I have the room on my iPad. The, it's very misty. Right. It's all it's all about like figuring out how to unlock the door. You know, they're kind of like escape rooms almost. They're like, yeah, they're kind of like a precursor to modern day escape rooms because it's all about like figuring out the right combination to get the door to open. Yeah, exactly. Like what's in this painting? Oh, it's got like, oh, you look at the time on the painting and that's the you know, that's the what you have to set the clock to. And then it opens a secret hatch and there's a. I really I like, like those. I really like those room games. They're, Me too. They sort of. Uh, they sort of feel like the, the modern day version of what Mist was doing back in the day. Um, that's it. We're done. Good job, everybody. Yeah. Hey, if you're listening to this, uh, send us an email. Tell us what your favorite, uh, greatest video game of all time is. Yeah. Uh, um. I guess we should take a break and then come back for the next episode. What do you guys think? Yeah. Aaron, you want to tell, tell us? You want to tell people how they can get a hold of us? <laughs> well, through the mail. Um, yeah. True. Right. You can mail us through the electronic mail in particular. Yeah. 
at I, you oh. can send us regular mail, but I'm not giving out my address, so I don't know. You can call us, but we won't pick up. No one will answer. Um, yeah. There's a fax number. I forgot it. <laughs> can Everything we out of the fax just falls behind the cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> we have so many faxes back there. That's really how all our fans have been trying to communicate with us. There are. There have got to be at least four faxes back there. <laughs> They're all just... They're all just. Oh no! It's just one caterpillar. really long one. They're oh, all okay. just pictures of the caterpillar having sex with the French fry. Uh, oh man, well, that's worth it. Thanks very much uh, for listening. You can email <laughs> us at warpthepodcast at gmail dot com. Uh, you yeah. can follow us on Instagram at warpthepodcast. Buy our merch at Lunar Flare. We're on you could Twitter. Just join our group text. That's how I communicate with you guys. That's that's the easiest way. <laughs> <laughs> Some podcasts I listen to have like Reddit, like like Reddit, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Subreddit, subreddits yeah. or like Discord servers. And I'm like, you, that would just be like the five of us talking mm, yep. to each other. <laughs> Sounds fun. Um, we're on Twitter at Warped Track. I'm at I'm host Warped. Min is warp. Min is uh, wet Maynard for Dungeons and Dragons and Call of Cthulhu live streams and podcasts, and that's all, right? I can't. Remember. Uh, I think so. Merch. Join Lunar us next Flare. week. Lunar underscore Flare. Yep. On Instagram, we get t-shirts. Love the t-shirts. I need to buy another t-shirt. My down to pond far shirt is starting to get. Uh, yeah, pawn fart out. I pawn yeah. too much, and now yeah. I need <laughs> um, Join us next week for Silicon Avatar. Until then, my name is Matt. I'm Sean. I'm Jake. Philippe. Aaron. Hey. Thanks for introing this week, Aaron. Always. Always thanks, a pleasure. And thanks to Kenyon for our new intro. Yes. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Good night. Bye.